Warning, the Atari Creep YouTube channel is intended for a mature audience. Regardless of the subject matter, this video may contain strong language, simulated violence, and lots of psychological nudity. Viewer discretion is advised. What's up? Creepers and Geekers, Chris the Atari Creep. How is everyone doing today? Guys, I picked this Odyssey 500. It's a, it's basically a, 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 a Pong machine, but I picked this up yesterday for like 20 bucks. 20 bucks. We're not going to talk about this today. We'll talk about it maybe tomorrow or the next day. I still haven't any idea if it even fucking works. So let me play around with that and see if it does or not. No, today I want to talk about switch boxes. And to be perfectly honest with you, the reason I want to talk about it because this is some proprietary bullshit. Uh, we'll get to that here in a second. And just a little piece of advice. If you're going to go pick up one of these, if it doesn't come with one of these, I don't care how cheap it is. Even at 20 bucks, I wouldn't have picked it up without one of these. So as most of you know, when you go to hook up one of these old systems to your TV, we used to have these switch boxes. But more times than not, the ends that we would plug into those switch boxes would look just like this. For the most part, this one being the more common. But unfortunately, Magnavox and a few others use this kind of uh, barrel jack. But they felt like they needed to be different, which made things even more difficult, especially for people today to hook these things up. So this is more so for anyone who hasn't been around the game long enough. We're going to look at a couple of switch boxes, most of which I don't even own anymore. Um, alternatives. And more, more importantly, how the hell do you hook this stupid thing up to a television? Now, that's not to say there weren't a, a, a whole bunch of different variations of switch boxes. I'll put a picture up of the most common one right here. This is one that most people will recognize. But you have weirdo ones like this. You have ones like this without switches. Look at this gigantic fucking beast for my TI-99. But one of the main things they had in common is they all accepted this kind of a jack. This or this, which is the same thing, just with a little more of a, a collar, I guess you would call it. And how they would work is pretty much like this. Back in the, uh, up until probably the early 80s, maybe even some in the late 70s, they only had one kind of connection in the back. And it looked very similar to what you see here. It was a couple of screws. Some TVs only had two. Some TVs had four, six, eight, depending on how fancy of a TV you owned. But for the most part, it was for one thing and one thing only. Your antenna. This is pre-cable. So you had to get the signal in the house somewhere. So you either had an antenna outside and had a wire going into the house, or you bought those rabbit ears that would sit on top of the television, which more than likely didn't do shit, unless you had a mile of tin foil attached to it, and somebody would be there fidgeting the damn things all fucking day long. It was a nightmare before we got cable. But they would all connect with these little prongs, these fucking devil pitchforks. Now, I know EVGN said that, and I'm not copying it. We used to call that, we used to call these them, um, back in the day as well. So regardless of this being a proprietary system, they all pretty much had the same function. You would plug this into the TV, because remember, a lot of TVs back then had maybe, maybe two inputs, okay? And then you would plug your antenna to this right here. So now you have a pass-through, and you get this nifty little switch here for the game, or antenna, or TV, depending on, this one says TV, some would say antenna. So whenever you wanted to play your Atari 2600, your little black and chrome switch box, you'd have to switch that, turn the TV on to channel 3, and then your game would work no problem. Now later on, some systems came up with a system like this. Um, this doesn't replace the switch box. In fact, this still has to go into a switch box on older TVs. But today's modern TVs, you can just put this in the back, and we'll talk about that here in a second. And all is good. It's just basically a cable that goes from one end to another. But these even still, you would think this would be some kind of a, a switch box. And, and Nintendo had the same thing, but it was just gray. Sega had it for theirs up until they started using AV stuff. Um, it was, it's all pretty much the same thing, just with a different, different package. But this would plug into one end of the console. This would plug into the uh, switch box. And there you go. And just to let you know, you can use this exact cord or whatever one you have for any system. I keep this one plugged into the back of my television. I plug my Atari, my Nintendo, and my Sega Genesis. Anything that takes this kind of thing, my 800, uh, the Intellivision, which has its own cable anyway. But all would work the same. This is basically just a cable. Now, eventually, we, we had no use for the antenna screws or whatever. We got... We got ourselves this nifty little thing called a coax input. When I was a kid, they called it being cable ready. So now you have a little nipple on the back of the TV with some screws on it. 
that automatically goes to whatever channel you set the damn thing to. You can get rid of that stupid box now and get yourself one of these. And I've used these for years. I got a whole drawer full of these things. Um, it's simply a coaxial male to RCA female. And the idea is this screws into the back of your TV. Your console goes into here. And you can tell that switch box to go fuck itself. Bringing us all the way back to this proprietary bullshit. Now, one thing I will say that this has above all the others is the other ones would come with double sticky tape that you can stick to the back of your TV. And if you look at the back of one of those really old TVs, I'll try to bring that image back. You'll notice in the particle board covering the rear, there are holes everywhere for ventilation. Well, they were nice enough to give you a little hook. <laughs> a little hook to put this thing in so you can screw this into your deal. Now, you can't use any of the solutions I talked about with this bad boy because there's no way to plug it in. This will only work with this compatible female counterpart. So how do you get this thing hooked up to a TV if you can't connect it to modern shit? It's actually a really simple solution. I just don't know how available they are. You need to find yourself one of these bad boys right here. This is as primitive as a connector as you can fucking get. Simply put, you screw the little evil prongs into this. This pops into your coax in the back of the TV and Bob's your uncle. I have to use one of these for now this Magnavox Odyssey. And we'll find out in this video if it works. And if it does, expect a review of this thing. If it doesn't work, don't expect a review of this thing. But I have to use this for not only this, but I also have to use it for that nightmare that came with my TI-99. That thing is huge and you can't even unplug it from the back of the goddamn console. So it simply works this way. I don't believe I'm actually going to even do this. I don't think I should. I think it's too simple of a, of a tutorial. I think you can figure out screws. You just slip it in like that. Boom. Slip it in like that. I do have one thing to say though. I do have one thing to say. And there you go. Nice and solid. Make sure your connections are good because this is probably going to be hanging at some point. AVGN did a video on Pong machines back in 2011, I think. Doesn't matter when it came out. But he showed that he had a console that only had this kind of a connection and one of these prongs are missing. If that happens, you're still in luck, my friend. All you have to do is take the wire that's coming out of here and wrap around the screw and then secure it as tight as you can. All this is, is a connection. It has no other function than to pass the electricity to the wire. It's crimped onto the actual wire itself and it just makes it more convenient to connect it to this little doohickey. So if you have one of these that have one or both of the prongs missing, as long as you can get some wire off of it, wrap it around that tight, you'll be fine. You're not gonna cause any fires, no electrical shorts or anything. Um, if you know this is all you're gonna use it for, you could even solder it together. Uh, if you have any soldering skills, it wouldn't be that hard to do. Now this isn't the TV that we're going to be testing the Odyssey on. We're gonna go into the bedroom to do that where I normally record videos. This is just an extra TV I have laying around for if and when I ever get my own little setup. But where do you plug this monstrosity into? Right here, it's a nice, there's a little coaxial. Little coaxial, I call it a nipple. It's a little nipple that has threads on it. That's it, that's all you need to do. Make sure it's on channel three and you can fire this bad boy up. Just to be thorough and show you. Remember this guy? This screws into the back just like that. Okay, now I'm not gonna screw it all the way because I wanna put it in my actual TV. And now it's ready for any kind of input device like this or your Atari 2600 or your 800 or your Intellivision. I always have one of these plugged in and this box is always in the back in case I need to feed that to a console that doesn't have built-in cables. But this will fit right in there and I can pull it out and switch consoles whenever I like. Easy peasy. I would recommend you having a box of these. All right, so we have the TV on the channel three. We have the cable into the box. The box is on computer or game, depending on what box you have. It's plugged into the adapter. The adapter is jammed into the back of the TV. I'm not anticipating a great connection here because there's not a lot of room, but we'll figure it out one way or the other. But together, we're gonna find out if this Odyssey 500 works and if there's going to be a review this week. So in three, two, here peeping. All right, cool, we do have a picture. Let's see, reset works. Yep, reset works. This is what's great about this unit. Just a little heads up. Um, 
you get little characters instead of paddles. That's the claim to fame here. So there you go. So you don't get a seizure, I'll turn that off. I'm gonna have to clean up all the connections and see if I can't get that flicker to go before I review it. But hopefully if uh, switch boxes or these weird proprietary ones were a mystery to you, you learned something today. And if uh, you already knew all this stuff, I uh, hope you stuck around anyway just to, just to support what I try to do here. Guys, I really do appreciate you sticking around and watching something like this. This is more so for the younger cats or anyone who might have a system that they're just like, ah, oh, fuck, how do I get this on the TV? And I know there's a few of you experienced people out there. A good friend of mine, he had all kinds of systems. And one day he came up to me with an actual Magnavox Odyssey 2 and was like, how the fuck do I play this on my television? And I had to show him. So guys, let me know down below if there's anything that you think I missed. If this helped you out. Or if it was just more of the same and you just felt like sticking around anyway. Guys, go ahead and leave your feedback. Thumbs up, thumbs down, all feedback to the Creepers Positive. Don't forget, we are still in full swing with the Alzheimer's Association. All information is down below. Lots of great prizes we'll talk about here in the next uh, next couple of days. I need to do an update video and a thank you video. I have been kind of lacking on that and I apologize. I try to get one of those out at least once a week like I did the past few, few years. Um, but we will get to that soon. Don't forget, we got a couple of games we're still giving away. Read the shit down below. I still have uh, the controller at the end of all of this to give away from Retro Game Boys. It's your choice. Your choice of a gamepad. Awesome, awesome stuff. Guys, I hope you're doing well. Thank you always so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Stand by looking for this, uh, this Odyssey 500 review. As soon as I get the, the picture to come in fine. Get that going. I hope you're excited, guys. Hope you're doing well. Thank you always so much for watching. I can't say that enough. And until next time, take care. Creep it real. Creaky four. And bye bye.